Good morning, folks. Lester here. And uh, today we're going to be moving some green hay, some alfalfa, out of the barn behind me. We're going to load it up and carry it over there to Jamie's horse stables so that uh, she'll have an easier time putting that hay out whenever she needs to. We do have rain coming in, and uh, our horses prefer to have dry hay. Now listen, while I'm working, I would love to tell you all a story. Yes, an oldie but a goodie. Now remember, there's a couple of rules for story time. Rule number one, mature audiences only. Rule number two, no pee padding allowed. Rule number three, no sensitive viewers. If you can handle all three of those rules, we hope that you'll enjoy the story. But if you can't, remember, there are a thousand other farm channels that would love to have you come by and visit. All right, my friends, it's time. Enjoy the story, an oldie but goodie called The Hook. <laughs> So there was this fella named Tommy, and he really had a crush on this high school classmate. Her name was Susan. And Tommy had been talking to Susan for a while, and he told her that he's been saving up his money, and once he gets himself a car, he's gonna wanna take her out. Well, she loved the idea, and sure enough, he continued to work and save and work and save. And at some point, Tommy had saved up enough money, he bought himself some wheels, y'all. Nothing fancy, but he sure was proud of that car. And uh, sure enough, he asked her out. Tammy said, uh, the only problem is you're gonna have to convince my parents to make sure it's okay with them. So as custom in those days, Tommy made his way over to Tammy's house. And whenever he got over there, he went inside, he met both of her parents and he, asked her parents if it'd be okay if he took Tammy to the drive-in uh, to get a soda, maybe a hamburger, something to eat and drink. And after much, after a lot of promises, Tommy assured them that he would drive safe, he'd have her home by a decent hour, and there would be absolutely no hanky-panky. Well, it wasn't easy for Tammy's parents to allow her to go but you know what, they knew Tommy, they'd known him their whole life and he seemed like a nice enough guy. So sure enough, they agreed. Now here's the problem. Tommy didn't really take Tammy to the drive-in to get a soda. Instead, he convinced her to take themselves a drive up the hill out to the, fo uh, to the forest and he wanted to show her a very romantic spot. Well. Tammy agreed, and so at some point they found themselves going through the woods, way up on top of this hill, and he turned himself down, so they couldn't hardly drive any further, and there in front of them, my friends, was the most beautiful view you'd ever seen. Man, from this spot in the hill, you could look down and see the city below. It was just a gorgeous place. Well, most of you guys have been there and you kind of know how this story goes, but uh, at some point, Tommy reached over and he turned on the radio and he ended up putting his arm around Tammy and, uh, you know, he kind of slid himself a little bit closer and talking about how beautiful everything was and how much he's looked forward to this date with her and how much, you know, how much he's enjoyed spending time with her. And I mean, you know, he's just laying it on really, really thick. But hey, she's enjoying it, y'all. She's having a nice time. And so they're sitting there listening to the radio, looking at the beautiful scenery, talking, just talking. But that's when it first happened. On the radio, the uh, broadcast was interrupted by a special service announcement, uh, a news bulletin. <laughs> We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a very important announcement. 
And of course, both Tommy and Tammy were listening intently as the radio broadcast told them that a man, yes, a man had escaped from the local penitentiary. Now, police could not find this man, not sure where he's at, but they think that he's somewhere up in these mountains hiding out from police. And they tell everybody, if you see this man, you must call police immediately. He's, 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 he's dangerous. And they went on to tell everybody that you can identify this fella from one distinguishing, distinguishing. <sighs> Guys, I just can't focus right here. Hey, hey, I can't focus right here. We're trying to have a story time. We're trying to have story time. Okay, we just want to have story time. And in my story, there's no horses. There's no horses in my story. <laughs> Dang it. Oh my gosh, y'all, just hold on. Everybody, just give me a few minutes here, please. And uh, we're going to go tell my story somewhere else. I'm trying to tell a story. Go away. I'm telling a story. Oh my lord, y'all. I'm trying to tell... Sweetie, I'm trying to tell a story. <sighs> Sorry. Try this again. Okay, where were we? Beep, 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 beep. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a very important news bulletin. A man has escaped from the local penitentiary. This man is dangerous, and police are asking that if anyone sees this guy, please contact authorities immediately. Now, of course, Tammy and Tommy were both a little bit alarmed what they had heard the, there's a guy escaped from prison some were hiding out in these same woods trying to evade authorities but at the same time tommy was very very invested in this beautiful girl sitting here beside him who he waited so long to take out on a date he knew he didn't have all night mom and dad wanted her home fairly early so tommy's like hey, hey listen don't 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 be scared it's okay girl you know i got you you know i got you here just just come over here a little bit closer come a little bit closer to me and i'll hold on to you so as tommy's sitting there holding on to her and he's making her feel safe and that there's nothing to worry about the news broadcast continues and they start defining things about this guy where you can identify him easier and the most horrible image came to mind when they heard that this man his left hand had been injured in some kind of a horrible accident. And what he had now in place of a hand was a hook. You heard me right. He had a hook in place of a hand. Well, of course, that was very creepy to poor Tammy. And she couldn't even hardly stand it. But Tommy assured her, come a little bit closer and you'll be safe with me. He squeezed her nice and tight, and they continued to listen to the radio and look out at the beautiful scenery there in front of them. Well, it wasn't long until Tammy thought she heard this strange noise. Hmm? Did you hear that, Tommy? Tommy's like, no, no, I didn't hear nothing. I, I didn't hear a thing. What did you hear? I don't know, but I think something's out there. Well, of course, it was dark, and no one could see anything. But Tommy's like, listen to me, sweetie. You don't have to worry. You're with me. You know I play football. You, you know there ain't no one going to mess with us up here. There's no one out here. We're, we are all alone. So come on, a little bit closer. So she squeezed in a little bit closer. Everything seemed to be going okay. Until all of a sudden, she could have swore she heard it again. <coughs> Did you hear that, Tommy? Sweetie, I didn't hear nothing. Maybe maybe the wind is blowing. Maybe it was a limb. 
No, Tommy, there's something out there. I, I, I'm sure of it. I can hear there's something out there. Listen to me. You're just imagining things. I can promise. Just come a little closer. Just close your eyes. It's okay. Just listen, listen to the music. Tommy, I, I'm just really scared. I, I would just rather you just go ahead and take me back home. Hold on. We, we don't want to go home now, do we? Well, could we at least just go back into town and get something to drink, maybe? Fine. At that point, Tommy realized that his goals for the little trip to the woods was not going to happen. But it's okay. He still had this beautiful girl at his side, so fine. We'll just go get us a soda. But Tommy goes to try to start the engine, and he realizes that his battery has kind of run down. And his car was giving him a hard time starting. As a matter of fact, nothing was happening at all. At that point, they heard another noise in the car. <coughs> There was something scratching along the right side of the vehicle. Neither Tammy or Tommy knew what was going on. Tommy still struck, still struck. Finally, the car cranks up. Tommy shoves it in gear and off they go. They don't hesitate. Tommy and Tammy both heard at that time. And they drove that car, y'all. They drove down that hill. They drove as fast as they could. And sure enough, in no time, they were back to the main road. Woo wee. That was scary. Once Tammy and Tommy were finally safely back in town, they were sitting there parked at the drive-in. Tommy and Tammy decided to get out and go sit with some friends. Tommy, who was trying to be the perfect gentleman, gets out of the car and he walks around, still remembering how horrified he was just a few minutes earlier. But as he walks around to open the door for Tammy, something caught his attention. Something he'll never forget. As he walked up a little bit closer, he could not take his eyes off of it. Right there on the doorknob, Tammy's doorknob was a hook. And you could see that the end was all bloodied up. It was obvious that at some point, someone was trying to get inside the car. I'm guessing Tommy must have cranked it up and took off at the right moment. And it yanked the hook right out of the man's hand. It could have happened, y'all. It, it could happen. It could have happened. Anyway, that is a story called The Hook. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching. And uh, I'm sorry for them girls and that their misbehavior. Catch y'all in the next video. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. Something like that.